Hey guys, it's RCK. I hope uh, everyone's having a great day today. Um, this is going to be my second time recording this video. Um, as I was uploading the video, I was going to watch it over before I uploaded it, and I noticed the audio wasn't working. I was like, what the heck is going on? I went back over to OBS, and I, I was like, why isn't my microphone working right now? And that's a very, very unfortunate. I sat down for 40, 45 minutes. I'm recording all of that and then to find out that it wasn't working while I was uploading it to YouTube. I'm very, very sad, um, but hopefully I will be able to do it a little bit better the second time, of course. Uh, that's what I aspire to anyway. Um, if you remember from last turn, Satius took one of the uh, provinces that was owed to us um, that we talked about having. So he sent us gold and def gems. It looks like it gives a def gem every turn and around... Uh, 90 gold per turn, 91 gold per turn. You see us casting a couple of different spells, lots of quartz main constructs. We plan on going underwater with those guys while also doing a few other things. You also see a casting of Contact Nyad, which is very, very nice. That's going to give us a Water 3, Nature 3 um, that we're able to put boosters on and boost up. And next, you'll see us having some crippled and limping units dying. And then we see a battle here. This is just Satis fighting at the throne, or at the throne. Um, not, not the inside of the throne, but just the outside of the fort. Um, still kind of the same formation we've seen um, from previous battles. Lots of reborn up here at the front. I believe that's 14 reborn. No, maybe it's more than that. Maybe, yeah, this one looks like a lot more than that. Lots of elite warriors, lots of charioteers. A very strong communion core. Maybe it's 14 shamans. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Um, large waves of horde of skeletons coming in front, followed by the elite warriors, and then following them, the charioteers who come in and trample and break up lines, while also having all these mages casting things in the back. If you see here, we also have some crystal sorcerers that you might remember about, throwing some thunder strikes and other air spells down in the communion. Um, which is quite interesting, um, but not too much to see there in all honesty. And it was four, no, it was 14 Reborn and then 14 Shaman, so I was correct. It just looked like there was so much more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I guess that's right. Yeah, quite interesting. It just looked like it was more. Um, we'll go over to the next battle. Um, we're still raiding on Gartha, and we see that Helheim is raiding them as well. Um, from the looks of it, on this battle here, Helheim hits a Gartha first, and then we hit Helheim. Uh, we uh, we are attacking uh, Gartha underwater at this point, trying to take the few underwater provinces that they control. Um, I brought too few. And I just forgot how crappy corpse main constructs really were. Um, they only really work well when you put a lot of uh, blesses, alteration spells, things as such on them. Um, but we will watch the battle. This is against Ichthids. Um, if you remember correctly, um, corpse main constructs have really, really poor skills. Even then, I mean, basic attacks go of eight. That's with not with that's without the underwater penalty, and then. A, Basic defense skill of 6, and then minus 3, then minus 1, taking it down to 2 defense skill and 5 attack skill. That is terrible. Um, also seeing the magical resistance is very, very low. It's a very, very sad thing to see. But they usually do have rather high, higher hit points and uh, seemingly high strength value. So they do very, very well at sieging forts and being chaff. Um, but if you're going to use them as troops, you really need to buff them. And a very, very small force of Ichthids here. And between the nets, and then just having so much better stats than us, even though, let's look at a different one, even though their attack skill is 9, and their defense skill is 8, that just way outmatches the 5 attack skill and 2 defense skill of our corpse constructs. And we just watch them get wiped out here. And I will head over back to the report. Um, and this is Helheim here. Um, very, very strong raiding forces we see with Helheim. Um, more than likely, they expect us to start bumping into each other um, due to the fact that we've already done that one time. I believe they lost, or maybe they still won. Um, just losing a commander along with about 17 Firehorn Warriors. Um, not 
too big of a fuss. Yeah, we don't want to lose troops, but at the same time, we expected a bump, and if there was a bump, we didn't lose too much. We didn't want to lose like an Eagle King or something. It'd be a very, very expensive bump for us. Um, lots of little events here. Unrest. Uh, more bad events. It really uh, makes me want to take back the misfortune that we took. More bad events. Uh, fire gems. I think we do have a couple of good ones. Uh, lots, almost a thousand gold. Around 18 gems. A demon whip. Uh, very uh, interesting. I wonder who's going to use that. Uh, and we get another good event here. Being Adept of the Golden Order has joined. Along with 150 more gold. Um, so this was actually a very, very good turn for us. As far as events go. As far as our troop movement and the battle map goes. A little bit of troops moving back and forth here. We do have this mage right here, this naiad, and what they're going to be doing is casting Mother Oak, just due to the fact that we have a large stockpile, and we really don't have any reason to have this much, um, and just to actually put up a global would be nice. Um, we're making a few temples here and there, our, actually our, uh, domin or not, yeah, the dominion strength is relatively low, just due to our lack of temples. Um, because we don't actually need a temple to make our main researcher here. All we need is a lab. So, and our dominion strength is actually five, and we only have three temples, and we do a lot of work on that. Um, other than that, we're starting to move our forces to move on 135. I kind of want to, I think we saw forces moving around over here. I'm sending my scouts back out to see if Zetis is planning on hitting this very, very soon. I want to make sure even if we do bump that we take them out. I think all together, I think I lose about 10 or 15 gems in that battle to take this throne here. Um, we're starting to accumulate a decent amount of mammoths for our front lines. Also something we are going to hit before the battle is going to be Alteration 7, which is going to give us Fog Warriors, which is going to be a very, very nice spell for us to cast. Other than that, our research is going fairly well. We're starting to accumulate a lot of Lightless Lanterns and putting them on all of our research monkeys over here. I'm trying to spread them out a little bit. This one guy should probably definitely be on Forging Lightless Lanterns, but I probably did not catch him. Um, still moving a lot of site searchers around. We're starting to make our own Adepts of the Golden Order, and they're starting to site search, uh, definitely trying to get us a higher income of fire, while also searching for higher astral, because currently, as far as our site searching go, only uh, as far as fire goes, we're getting fire one site searched, and we're getting astral one site searched from the shamans. Um, so I'm definitely trying to get a, a wider range or... Uh, more coverage as far as our site searching goes and we're forging uh, rings of water breathing for very very cheap with a hammer here casting a reanimation uh, I changed after I watched that battle there I changed a lot of my corpse construct casting or had uh, some extra death gems laying around to start casting reanimation to back up the corpse constructs because um, as far as the uh, skeletons go i think their stats are like 11 and 10 or something but they still take the amphibious uh, tag to them so yeah they get minus three minus two i believe that still puts them at a pretty decent like eight attack skill and defense skill which is much better than the corpse constructs and just having them mixed in with the uh, corpse constructs will definitely help them out a lot as far as attacking the underwater provinces that we're going to be wanting here Other than that, I'm still making a few of the little useless, well, I wouldn't say useless, these always come in handy, um, endless bags of wine, um, so we can actually have stacks like this moving around. How many troops is, uh, it's almost 400 troops, and yeah, this one has more. We're forging a skull of fire that takes fire and death um, to get a extra fire path up. Uh, just in case we want to go for internal or internal fire, I believe. But I haven't decided. I don't want to put too much of a target on our back. I know there's no globals up at the moment. I felt like Mother Oak wasn't that bad of a global that someone would kill me just because I had it. Um, but if I was casting things like Riches from a Knee, the Earth Blood Deep Well, which I definitely could, or Internal Power, or Gale Gate, 
or gift of health or things like that, which I, I almost planned on doing like a gift of health, gift of health into like the uh, income one, which is like a level nine spell, just because of how high my nature income really was. But I decided not to instead because of how much of a target that really puts on your back. Because at this point in the game, I believe it's a couple more turns actually. I'm starting to talk to Vanheim. I don't know who has what thrones. Um, I'm really wondering where that level 3 throne is. And I'm looking at this and say, okay, so Tiss is going to either go to war with me or you. Um, he has this throne. He has 134 already. He's going to take 41. He has 39 in his territory, and that's already 6 points if that's all 3, or if those are all 2s. And then he has 37, which he can more than likely take fairly easily, so that's going to put him in 8. Um, if, we were very, if, we're, if we are very unlucky, um, one of these could be a, a level 3 throne. I'm putting it to a point where he would only need one more throne to win the game, and that only requires him to attack one person. Um, either me or Vanheim. Um, I don't think Helheim has any... No, Helheim does not have any thrones in his vicinity. He'd have to go pretty far through Helheim to actually get that throne. Um, but going to war with one person and having the thrones fairly close on the borders would be very, very bad for us. He could probably... Well, it'd be, it'd be kind of tough for him to hit 121 as far as my lane goes, but he could fairly easily hit 135 and that would be more than likely a throne he would take if he needed one more from me and as far as vanheim goes uh, the one right here which i don't know if vanheim has claimed yet but it's one of the ones that ermor had um, he could definitely easily move in and take that and just win the game right on the spot he wouldn't have to really push in any farther so I really get in touch with Vanheim and say, you know, if he goes to war with you, let me know and vice versa. Um, we really need to start thinking of a plan because he is very, very close. Um, because, I, I mean, I, I believe Vanheim only knows of me having that throne. Maybe he doesn't think I have that. I, I don't know what thrones he thinks I have and what thrones I, he doesn't think I have. But as far as thrones that I've claimed, I've only actually claimed one throne. And I left the Iron Throne unclaimed. Um... So any other throne I take on top of that, unless there's something I really, really need, I'm not going to claim them. I'm going to try to claim them all at one time, if I don't need them, of course. Just to kind of be a little bit less of a threat if someone comes, say if like a nation really doesn't know what I'm doing, like say, hypothetically, just like Vanheim or Satis was just like, okay, I don't really have any scouts in that area. Um, let me just go and see what thrones he has. He only has one throne. He's not really a threat to me. But, I mean, it would be much different if I said I had three thrones already. That would uh, People would be looking at me a little different, of course. As far as my research goes, uh, Alteration 7, like I spoke about, and then Enchantment 7. I have a lot of spells that Enchantment that I really, really want. Um, like I said, Gift of Health, but not really that big of a deal. Um, Serpent's Blessing would be a great spell to, for us to cast due to the fact of how many shamans we have. We can easily cast this. Um, having Poison Resistance plus 5 against Satis is going to be very, very nice for, for us. We also have uh, gain us a access to Earthblood Deepwell, uh, Mass Flight for our Elephants. We really don't have to cast that spell, but it would also help against any Communion Slaves and Masters that we had. Um, to say if we wanted to cast things like Earthquake and we didn't want to hurt our shamans or other troops that we had with us, we would definitely want to cast something like that. Um, Riches from Beneath, if we wanted to go for it. Grip of Winter is a very, very nice spell for us if we're able to push our Dominion or cast other spells that change the temperature of a certain province and have us come in and cast Grip of Winter. Um, we'll definitely fatigue out Satis. On top of that, Arrowfin is a great spell for us to have. Um, not, I mean, not the best against the Tis, or not, there was really not really many nations that would be really well against this. But just uh, Arrowfin in general is usually something you'd want to put up if you have it, and if you can put it up, you might as well put it up. So very, very nice spells uh, overall. Um, also another thing, Master Generation could be an idea, but. Birds really don't have that much help, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, Thunderfin's okay. Chakra's in plus 5, but I don't believe we go to Enchantment 8. 
uh, for a very long time. And then after that, we will be heading down Conjuration. There's a couple of spells in there that I want. Um, it will help us greatly with our magic diversity, getting higher death, or, you know, getting, uh, yeah, much higher death, actually. Um, break us into blood, much higher fire magic. Um, on top of that, much higher astral magic, along, along with getting holy fours and holy threes that can claim thrones for us. We'll be able to cast thing, easily cast things like Anti-Magic and Doom. Um, so very, very nice spells to cast. Uh, there's also a couple of others, of course, but not as big of a deal as those. I apologize for that. I had a little bit of burp. I didn't want to like, belch in front of everyone on the camera. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, definitely getting ready for the Throne Battle. I believe we attack or set the moves next turn after we get Fog Warriors. But we're sitting around, we're building temples where we can. We really start focusing on that to start pushing our dominion out. Um, not only to have a stronger or colder area or dominion overall um, as we push it out because we are wanting to push our dominion into Satis. Um, so we can easily or we can make it easier on ourselves to attack them versus. Uh, it will also be a lot harder for them to attack us, so we'll look a little bit un, a little unappetizing as far as a target goes, and uh, much more of a pain to raid and attack and things as such. And we also plan on taking all these water provinces that our Gartha has, and that will be all for this turn. Um, like I said, making the Skull of Fire, and we will go ahead and head over to turn forty-two. I forgot if I've mentioned or not, but as far as the turns we'll be doing for this episode, we'll be doing turn 41, 42, 43, and 44. Those will be four turns we'll go over. Um, other than that, I believe it's around turn 48. I believe I miss a turn. I can't quite remember. Um, but we will definitely come to that. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, we receive 88 gold from Satis. Um, finished level 7 alteration. We got up to enchantment level 4 or 5. Um, lots of different castings here. Reanimations, court constructs, mother oak like I spoke about. Found a magic site, a gateway, gate toward valley. That actually gives us centaurs and kills undead. Not too big of a deal for us. Um, undead you or crippled units dying. Uh, some more bad events of course. Um, kind of used to them at this point. And it looks like all of them were actually bad events, all giving unrest. So that's very, very unfortunate. Um, this turn, we're actually uh, making a ring of wizardry with our god. Um, that will push him up to level 8 astral, which is very, very high. Um, and then any other commander, like we can make our... We could easily have a level 6 nature naiad here. So... We can cast Gift of Health very easily, or any kind of global. And as far as summoning go, I mean, we'll be going into Conjuration very uh, soon, going up to eight, I believe. Um, we'll be casting a lot of uh, very, very nice spells. I'll go over them. Like, what did I go past it? No. Sea King's Court to go higher into, or kind of have combat mages for water along with Troll King's Court, and there's another one for Nature, I think it's Ivy King, yeah, it's Ivy King, so those are the kind of things we're doing, while also going for Call Greater Diva, and the, I can't remember if it's Yazad, or the Fravashi, um, one of those are the Astral Three Holy Threes, which is very, very valuable to us, so we would definitely want to get that. So other than that, I mean, we're still making a lot of uh, getting ready to uh, attack the water provinces here. We probably should have attacked them a lot sooner by now, but um, better late than never, I guess. Still moving, uh, lots, lots of troop movement, lots of uh, mages moving around, site searching. Um, very, very nice here as far as our income goes for gems. I'm forging rings of water breathing. Um, a few different things here and there. Endless bags of wine, of course. Um, moving in, this uh, shaman's going to be just casting uh, mass protection. We gave him a thistle mace and an extra gem or two um, because it just casts, it just costs one. But 
when you give him an extra gem on top of that, it's going to kind of boost him up to so he can cast level 3 spells. We gave him winged shoes so he can fly with the army. So, really nice. Other than that, I mean, not too much going on. But like I said, we probably use around 15 or more gems, which is uh, too much. I feel like we def definitely could have done more with less. Um, but overall, I just want to make sure I just really crushed that ar or that indie army there. I really didn't want to take any casualties from it. And I wanted to be careful just in case if the Satis was going to be hitting it at the same time we were. I wasn't entirely sure. Other than that, still making more temples here and there. Um, as far as my temple score, we have gone up to Dominion Strength of 6. We're at 5 temples. Um, trying to get up 10, so I try to push that to 7 or 8 at least before the game's over. Um, to try to help push a little bit. And yes, I could be using these uh, seraphines here to start preaching over here. And I think I do later on when it comes closer to... Uh, um, when it comes up more of a threat to fight in this area here. Um, something I noticed actually while I was making the other video, I thought it was very, very interesting that Colossa took very, very, very poor scales compared to me, but they have more population than my capital does, and they're also making a fair decent amount more than my capital. They're making a whole 40 more gold than my capital. And I took, I've had, I had really nice scales ever since the very beginning of the game where they took very, very poor scales. That is quite interesting. But uh, we do have a large battle here we are looking forward to. Boots of the Messenger, things like that. Um, I believe we start really casting a lot of spells in here in the next couple of turns. And we will head over to 43. Yeah, 43. Continue. 43. Alright, getting more gold and death gems from Satis. Uh, lots of castings going on. Uh, horror marked uh, Seraph uh, was attacked here. Unfortunate for us. But it's okay. I would still rather use Lightless Lanterns and have this happen every now and then than not use them at all, of course. Um, this is the battle here. And then also notice that Pythium ha or Ermor, I, I like to call them Pythiums for some reason, just because they have the same flag has decided to come out of his fortress or his capital and has attacked us with Shade Beasts, which is quite interesting. And uh, he's kind of let in his last little death throws over there trying to take back his cap, or his cap circle. Um, he will do a little bit of sieging back and forth and uh, just trying to stay alive in a way, try to do as much damage as he can before he goes out of the game. And we will watch this throne battle here. Now most of these troops are on attack closest, attack rear, um, some of them are on hold and I think most of them are on hold and attack, and I think one group was on attack rear to kind of stop any casting of anything. Um, the mammoths, of course, in front, they're just on attack closest. I, I believe most of these guys are on attack rear, hold and attack rear, or hold, hold and attack closest, just uh, trying to get a full surround on them. You can see the little eagle kings with their gold wings in there, and that one shaman. We also have a Harab Seraph. He'll be casting uh, Wailing Winds, uh, which is a fairly good spell. Once you have it, you kind of always want to cast it. Um, if you notice the composition of the other army, they do have some uh, Spring Hawks, so you'll be seeing them attacking rear. Uh, I don't believe the Pegasus Riders uh, attack rear, but I could be wrong. Uh, but we'll be casting a lot of things like Fog Warriors. We'll be casting Mist. We'll be casting Storm, Air Elementals, uh, Mass Protection. I feel like there's a few more things we cast, but I can't quite remember. And I'll go ahead and watch the battles. If you notice here, um, all of the birds went ahead and flown up, and they're still in their position. That's mass protection. Living. Oh, we cast living clouds. I'm surprised we cast living clouds, actually. I don't remember scripting that. But it's okay. And this is where the Spring Hawks have jumped down at. And honestly enough, I don't feel like they're going to be dealing much damage to us at all. Just to the fact of our Spirehorn Warriors actually have shock resistance. And their attacks deal very, very little shock or shock damage. So we should be fine, especially with all of the buffs that were going on. Our troops being actually mass protection hasn't cast yet. So we will look at them afterwards. But Misform has already gone down. 
Um, so very, very nice. Uh, we've also cast Mist. And see, I mean, even though they're shocking our troops, they're not dealing, like, any damage to them at all. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, Mass Protection did go down. I just didn't notice it because I was looking at the wrong one. The current Natural Protection is 10. So it's pushing all of our Spirehorn Warriors, a uh, very, very cheap, cheap unit, um, up to 15 protection, which is very nice for us. But I will not spend too much time watching this battle here. I just want to talk about what was going on back here. Um, the part that I want to see is this part here with the elephants and the Pegasus Riders and everything else. And I will go ahead and just go ahead and play the battle while I take a sip of water and let you guys watch it what goes on. Um, also, um, with Storm being cast and Mist being cast, the precision of these units are god-awful. Um, precision has gone down to 4 with their basic precision, plus their bonus is 13. So they went from 13, so they lost 9. Um, so taking them down to 4, so that is very, very nice for us. They really can't hit any anything. Well, that, that one's what, down by 8. Maybe I'm wrong. <sighs> but I will set this battle on play and let you guys watch. Casting Sim Shimmering Fields. Guess I can put it on a double speed. All right, that's everything. Um, so very, very a uh, good battle. Um, you guys can go ahead and put your bets on how many units you actually think died in that battle, how many Spirehorn warriors died because at the end they they are chaff units. Let's go ahead and think of a number in your mind, and I'll be ready to show you right now. So only eight units died. Um, very, very nice for us. Yeah, we did bring 600 to the battle. Yeah, sure. But I think only 8 died. So we lost 80 gold and took a very large throne. Um, so that was very, very good for us. And to our surprise, that throne is actually the level 3 throne. Um, even though if we claimed it, all it gives us is plus 1 misfortune. So we really don't want to claim it. Um, it is the throne that kind of everybody wants just due to the fact of it being the level 3 and it requires you to get one less thrown at the end of the game so I mean in all honesty because you need 11 points to win so you can get 1, 2, 3, 4 and then the level 3 so that would be 5 all together whereas if you had to get just all level 2's you'll have to get 6 level 2's instead of 5 uh, thrown so I'm really, really glad that we have that. So it turns out that Satis did not go take his troops over here. Um, so it makes me wonder if he's going for this throne now. I feel like at this point I could have actually have separated this army and then gone for both thrones at the same time. But I feel like they would have definitely have been some talks about uh, coming after me, of course. But that would have put me at one, two, three, four. So, six, uh, so put me at nine points. I'm sorry I was scrolling back and forth there. I apologize for that. But, um, yeah, I feel like I could have cut that army in half and gone for uh, 37 as well, but I didn't. Still moving my, getting my uh, Mound Kings ready to go underwater here. Still watching this battle. And if you notice, Agartha has really been able to accumulate a lot more troops. Um, lots of summons going on there. Great Alms, Cavern Whites, Magma Children, Seal Guards, Earth Reader. They still have a lot of stuff going on. And they do have a monolith, which is kind of scary. Like, I, I don't think that army would be able to kill a monolith. Depending on what it was. Because, I mean, uh, these troops really wouldn't have done nothing. They would have surrounded it. The Mammoths really wouldn't have been able to do anything against a monolith. Uh... Air elementals wouldn't have really done anything. So that would have been interesting. I feel like we would have had a we would have routed or timed out on that one. I'm still moving around site searching fire and astral and some death here and there, just trying to uh, really increase the total amount of gems that we have overall. And I know I say that a lot, but well, that's really what I spent most of the turns doing. Um we are forging a staff of elementary mastery, so that's going to give us plus one to elementary magic for whoever is holding that item. 
Um, very, very nice item to have. If we go over here, we're contacting another Naiad. And something a lot of people don't know is that, uh, okay, so Naiads have homesickness. So you can't move them out of the province that you made them in. And they'll start taking damage. And eventually they'll die, of course. But with a uh, this one, I wanted to keep safe in my capital or something because it had a global enchantment on it. So actually, you can cast a spell called Transform. And that's an alteration. I clicked the wrong button. That's an alteration six, I think. And it's something we just... That's the evocation. My bad. Alteration. Yep, alteration six. Um, so it's a nature two for eight gems. And it ch randomly changes your uh, mage into a monster or an animal that still has those paths. Um, so we'll be able to actually take the homesickness tag off of the... Uh, Nyad whenever they transform so really really cool we'll be able to bring them along in armies they'll be able to cast spells we can still put some boosters on them other than that i mean they don't have homesickness which is a really really big deal so really cool as far as our magic items go i actually sort them out this is kind of what we have um, we do have a ring of wizardry we have a ring of sorcery we'll have the elementary uh, We'll have the staff going on. We'll have some earth boots. We got, still have an extra skull staff. Oh, I know we have some on some commanders. I'm making a lot of water boosters here. We're also having some nature boosters and fire boosters. If I want to do anything along those lines. Um, but like I said, I've already kind of explained myself on what I want to do with fire. Or what I want to do with uh, water and earth gems. And then also I've kind of explained myself on death gems. And I'm spending a lot of time trying to find... Uh, astral because our astral is only a level or at plus eight per turn um, so rather rather low um, three casting arcane probing here we'll try to see if we can find any and then we're also building a palisade on this throne while moving out the rest of the troops into different locations um, these three castles here are kind of like my centralized locations as far as keeping troops just due to the fact on how easily they move across the map and the area how centralized they are because like any troops here can go from one side they can go over here they can reach all the way to the other side of my nation if i need to um, same for these i can fly from here to here or like all the way attack satis or i can fly all the way to the edge of my nation and then the same one for this one. Um, if I needed anything, I could attack players from one side or the other. So a very, very good response uh, locations here. If I was attacked, I would be really able or very quickly um, mobilize my army and attack from... Uh, if I, Even if I was attacked from multiple or multiple sides, I can move back and forth fairly quickly. Um, like say if I was attacked on this side, I mean, yeah, maybe the armies from here might not be able to make it. From my uh, capital, but I know for sure that these two, whatever is position there, will be able to. And these are where I mean, I half this up or put this in thirds and move them out. Um, but it's quite interesting. Um, so that is turn forty three, and we'll go ahead and look over at the next one. I don't believe I missed anything. No, I did miss something. I did want to talk about. Or more taking back their cap circle uh, and they do uh, I believe uh, siege this uh, fort here which is quite interesting it kind of leads me to believe that Satis did not want to finish off Ermore which is quite interesting I'm, I mean I know he wanted the throne a lot more just because it puts him in a better place to win um, but he was right there sitting on the fort or the capital to begin with I mean why couldn't he just finish him off Probably would have took, what, two turns, one turn to go over there. And I believe he would have been able to break the fort as soon as he got on it. Maybe maybe it would have took him three turns, two turns to break the fort, and then one turn to storm it. But, I mean, my, at most it might have took three, and then at least it might have took two. But still, I'm quite interesting that he did not go for the kill on that. Usually enough, I will go for the kill if I'm that close to it. Unless I have to prepare for something like a monolith or something along those lines. That might just siege the fort for a little while. So I'll go ahead and end the turn and go over to our last turn being turn 44. Continue 44. 
And as before, I mean, a lot of the same things. We're getting gold from Satius, Def Gems, uh, we finish a enchantment level 8. No, seven, no, 6, and we're going to 7. I don't know why I said 8 for some reason. Um, Niaz, Arcane Probing, which we don't actually find anything doing all three of these probings. But actually, one of our level 1 Astral Sight Searchers found two uh, sites. One being a Painted Cave, which gives one Astral Gem. And then the other being a Starlit Pond, which also gives another Astral Gem. So, we just spent nine gems to get nothing, whereas one of our level 1 Sight Searchers got two per turn. Um, so, you know, that's that's how life is. Um, um, some crippled units dying, some other Sight Searchers missing stuff. But we do see a battle here, and what this is is actually the throne, the centaur throne over by Satis, and we will definitely be watching that. Uh, a scout that we caught over, this seems to be the uh, throne province, so we did end up catching a scout I was patrolling in that province, because I figured somebody was watching my battle. Um, a few un or some few bad events, uh, one good one, some earth gems, and then 33 unrest, which is unfortunate. Then we had a unit die from a disease. I believe he has had it for quite a while now. Um, it was something we've caught a while back and we've noticed it. But we'll go ahead and watch this battle here. Um, very, very similar to the other formation that the army is over on the Ormorian throne, which is quite interesting. Very, uh, I mean, it's a very, very solid formation, honestly. Having all the reborn in front and casting uh, Horde of Skeletons two to three times, blocking up anything, taking lances and things as such, followed up by, which actually this is uh, quite a little bit different than the other formation due to the fact that he had a lot more elite warriors, whereas this is a majority of Falchioneers. Um, so quite interesting. These are definitely more killy units, whereas elite warriors hit harder. Um, while also having the shaman groups here, or shaman communions, and it seems like he has also brought an additional three crystal sources with, along with this army as well as the other one, which is quite interesting because I've noticed that he hasn't lost any shamans. I'm sure he did the math on it if they're casting Thunderstrike every turn, how many slaves he needed to actually support uh, three of them casting those spells um, so that they would not uh, burn themselves out. So that's quite interesting to see. And then another, uh, similarly, uh, this is a pretty decent sized force of charioteers here off to the side. I'm sure they're on like hold and attack rear or attack rear. More than likely, no, I'm almost positive they'll be on hold and attack rear just because he's going to want these skeletons in front. So quite interesting. He also has a bane here, but it has no, no items on it. So I guess he's not thugging it out. And I don't really see any undead units he would want to lead with that. I mean, I, yeah, it does have leadership of 60. Interesting. Um, but regardless, we will go ahead and play the battle. And as far as the throne goes, uh, lots and lots of centaurs. Um, probably around 100 centaurs, in my opinion. Um, but there is no titan level god here. So, I um, could definitely tell this is a level 2, just due to the fact of them not having a Titan type chassis in here. Or really, I don't think they really have any mages at all. Well, yeah, I don't think these are, yeah, these are all uh, Ivy Ogres, or Vine Ogres. I really don't see any mages. And we will go ahead and watch this battle here. And like I said, we'll see the older, older skeletons and all the... Uh, Go ahead and take a sip of water and sit back for a moment and let you guys watch. Interesting to see a storm cast here. And if you see there, I just caught it kind of by a glimpse. Um, he has a mage casting howl, it's a very top spell up there. So that means he has conjuration six, I think. This is interesting. I think it's five or six, I can't remember. And there goes howl. Bolt of Unlife. 
Interesting. Go script. But other than how, I mean, I really don't see nothing new going on. Oh, he does have uh, Arrowfend, which is Enchantment 6, which is not too surprising due to the fact that he normally would... Uh, I think any Satis player would go for Enchantment 5 first due to the fact you get Horde of Skeletons and you get Foul Vapors, which is a great combination for you. And then since he has the Astral, or he has the Astral Air Communion going on, he could easily throw in something like Arrowfin, which would greatly help his troops out um, due to the fact of them not having any shields, if you know. I mean, Falconeers don't have shields, Elite Warriors don't have shields. I don't think the Charioteers have shields. His mages don't have shields. Um, so very, very interesting. A nice inclusion here on the army here, I really believe. That really helps him out a lot. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, don't really worry much against Slingers. But, I mean, other uh, players and things as such would uh, be very, very useful against. And that's the end of it. Um, definitely a lot of wolves here were getting uh, accumulated here at the end. And we'll look at his losses here. So overall, he lost 55 Fashioneers and then 12 Charioteers. Um, so um, pretty, well, losing half of his Fashioneers, I mean, that's kind of, that kind of sucks. 13 gold apiece, eh, 500 and some gold maybe. And then those are 45 apiece, so maybe about 700 gold, maybe a little bit more. No, definitely more than that. But I'm not going to do the quick math in my head right now. But more than 700 gold, I know for sure. Um, but they did actually have a commander here. I just didn't notice that they had a dryad. But I don't feel like it casted too many great spells. Um, because Sorcerer is really doing a lot of damage here with the Thunder Strikes and other spells, opposition and things. So really surprising to see them take so many or take or deal so much damage. But still taking a heavy loss here, Faustineers. Um, but a very, very nice battle to watch. Um, as far as this turn goes, uh, removing uh, our Azure Mage. I don't know quite why I'm moving him to my capital, but I guess we are. Um, other than that, we are actually starting our assault onto these water uh, lakes here. Um, we're also taking this one from Agartha. Uh, with our combination of troops now being our skeletons, with our corpse constructs we more than likely will definitely take that um, this one is probably much larger for force yes yeah, so 30 corpse constructs with 40 skeletons um, so i have really um, i kind of worried about the sea trolls and the region and stuff but we sh definitely should be fine with the amount of troops that we have other than that i'm still making a palisade there of course And that's really about it. We're kind of just taking the underwater provinces. Um, as far as our southern border goes, um, we're definitely taking back 68 from Ermor. Bringing enough forces at this point just in case if they were trying to bait us in a way with the heavy cab. Um, they, I didn't want them to, I didn't want to throw like 20 or 30 birds and just have the heavy cab wipe it if they moved in that province baiting us. So... I definitely brought a very, very strong force to take that province back. But I can't remember. I, I think it had uh, these. I had a couple gems in it, I think. I can't remember quite. But um, so interesting. And that's really about it for this turn, guys. Um, make sure to join again. Uh, next episode will be going over 45, 46, 47, and 48. Um, so be sure to come back again. You know, always a lot of good stuff. We'll be moving into uh, more like high level earth and water magic. Throwing it into the battles. Uh, we are also trying to make more temples of course. I, I think when we started the episode we were at like 3 or 4. And uh, at this point I mean we've made... Around four or five, so I mean, I'd say that's a definite increase. But I want to get to like Dominion seven or eight at least. Um, so we will be working on that, of course. And uh, things are going well. Um, definitely are watching this here, seeing when they're going to storm that fort. 
we have our eyes on Agartha, seeing what Agartha's uh, up to. We know that they took this throne. We have our eyes on this throne, just in case to see whenever they want to take it. And that's really about it, guys. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to check it out again. Um, I hope you guys really enjoy the expansion videos along with the series and the guides and stuff. I always have a lot of fun making that stuff, and I've actually reached my goal of 100 subscribers. Um, I really, really appreciate everyone out there that has subscribed and is watching the channel. Um, I have a lot of fun doing it. I really had no idea to have this much fun. Sometimes, I mean, it's not, it's not a hassle to make videos. Um, I do enjoy it quite a bit. Um, sometimes, I mean, you know, life kind of gets gets in the way, you know, you, you got to work late or you know, different things. You have an event going on, you have to go to a family member's house. And, you know, I mean, I, I try to keep to a schedule. Um, I at least try to make a couple of videos every week, maybe like two or three. I know I originally set, told myself I was not going to throw random videos in. Um, but I do from time to time, just because they're also games I enjoy. I know uh, most Dominion 5 players probably wouldn't like a first-person shooter like the Deep Rock Galactic or an RTS game like Company of Heroes 2, but, I mean, if they're a game I play on the side, I might show it every now and then. I, they're definitely not something I'd be making a lot of videos about because this is most definitely dedicated to uh, Dominion 5, of course. But... I'm just kind of showing off what I what else I play, and I might post them every now and then if I if I run out of a video to make or I need to throw an extra video here and there, I'll just run out of time. Um, so uh, that's the only reason real reason why I make those videos. If anyone was wondering, so uh, have a great day, guys. I'll make sure to or be sure to come back for the next episode. Bye.